Do you guys remember the first time you were asked to apologize? Because I remember mine. I was a very young kid. I, it's probably one of the earliest memories that I have in my life. And I was playing with one of the neighbors. And I picked up a toy that looked defective. And I bashed it against a rock. So my friend started crying because he really cared about the toy. But I found it amusing because it's like, why do you care about a broken toy? So when I get home, my parents called me and they're basically saying, well, how would you like it if it was done to you? Like, how would you like it if a friend of yours took one of your toys that you care about and broke it? Basically, my parents were trying to teach me empathy and compassion. And it actually worked because I had time to self-reflect and I realized that, yeah, you know, that that would be awful. And the neighbor is my friend. I shouldn't have behaved that way towards him. So I went and I apologized. And, and what is the purpose of an apology? It's not to erase the past. Like, you cannot fix the toy you've broken. And it's not to justify your actions because you admit that your actions may actually be unjustifiable. But what the purpose of an apology is, is to show that you have reflected on the issue and that you promise to never do it again. So as long as the person accepts the apology and the other party keeps their word and do not do it again, then the event should be considered forgotten. Now, when you look at it like that, you understand why you cannot possibly apologize to a crowd, why, why it's never possible to apologize to a group of people. Because you cannot empathize with a crowd. You can empathize with a person. You, you can put yourself into the shoes of another person, but you can never put yourself into the shoes of a crowd. So when you try to apologize to a crowd, no amount of self-reflection is going to explain why everyone is upset. Because different people may be upset for different reasons. You may have individuals that even fake being upset just to be part of the bandwagon because it's popular to hate on you. You may have individuals that are upset for political reasons. You may have individuals that are upset because you didn't take it far enough. So apologizing to a crowd will never work. Which is why if you want to ruin someone, you pressure them in order to make a public apology. So, uh, for instance, there was the scientist, Nobel winner, and he made the sexist joke. And you had two sides, uh, two groups of people. You had on one uh, part, like the group of people that were trying to defend him, saying, well, it was just a joke. And the other group that demanded, he apologized. And the moment he apologized, the group defending him couldn't defend him anymore because it's like, well, he apologized means that he admitted that he was guilty. And when that happens... The group that asked him to apologize were now asking that he gets fired. And, and this is pretty much part and parcel of modern cultural politics, right? You force someone to apologize, they apologize, and that's when you can move on with the persecution because they admitted their guilt. And this is not the way I would like things to be. It's just the way that I observe things are. It's the new meta. Uh, I don't get to write the patch notes, but... I do understand how the meta is being played, which is why I'm here explaining it to you as well. So if we are to assume that apologizing means that you accept guilt, what should we believe for a person that apologizes and then actually deletes the apology? Which is pretty much what's happening here. You got tenacious uh, decal gas, which uh, was hoping for the uh, U.S. presidential nominee to get assassinated. He says that, uh, and then he realizes, oh shit, that actually has consequences. You, you have Australian lawmakers demanding his deportation. I wouldn't be surprised if the other venues that he was supposed to appear at and sing at uh, were getting all sorts of phone calls and, and angry letters and um, potentially even threats. To the point where insurance skyrocketed, so like the venues had to cancel on them. That's my opinion. I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Uh, and they had to cancel the tour, losing a lot of money. They made an apology, and now they deleted it. And I think that the reason they did this is because of that childish mindset, right? Which is if you offend someone, you're supposed to have a time of reflection, and then put yourself into the shoes of the other person, Go there, show that you understand how they feel, apologize, and promise to never do it again. But in this situation, no one believes that they had any type of reflection. No one believes that they're actually sorry for what they said. Uh, and by deleting the apology, it actually shows that, well, they may possibly do it again if they think it's financially profitable. 
so as you can see, Tenacious D music, uh, musician Kyle Gass has deleted an Instagram post in which he apologized. He formed uh, half of the comedy rock band along with actor Jack Black and made reference to the shooting of the former President Trump. The incident caused a rift between the two bandmates with uh, Black publicly condemning the joke. Again, I, I do think that um, actors, celebrities, and even cultural influences influencers they don't really care about morality i mean you you have these people constantly <clears throat> talking about environmentalist policies while showing off their multi-million dollar yachts and flying around their private jets i think they will say and do whatever brings them more money because it's a business right and they are the brand so they have an interest in keeping their brand pr safe and at the same time they have an interest in not uh, upsetting the people that are their fans and give them money, their investors, as well as the venues that, in this case, they operate under. So, like, this distancing over the type of speech, it's possible that Jack Black genuinely doesn't like this type of joke, uh, that doesn't like gallo humor, doesn't like black humor, uh, or, or maybe even cares about Donald Trump, I don't know. Uh, but it's also possible that he realizes that he can't do business this way. And, and the reason that I'm mentioning this is that back in the day, a lot of celebrities were making the same type of jokes. Eminem made it, um, Johnny Depp made it, uh, Kathy Griffin made it. Like, it was part and parcel to shit on Donald Trump back in the day. But after the assassination and people start, said that, okay, well, this looks serious, then you have culture shifting. Th then you actually have um, the, uh, the overtone window moving away, and now it's unacceptable. And these guys uh, said the joke too soon before they could assess the movement of the overtone window. So now they realize, oh shit, we're not goofed. Can we backpedal? And they tried backpedaling, and it didn't work. They tried apologizing, and it didn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is, as I mentioned before, you cannot empathize with a crowd. There may be people that actually love Donald Trump. So, you know, they were offended. It's like, how can you say something like this? Uh, people that are actually offended by violence. But there may also be people that have their friends or themselves got canceled from social media because they misgendered someone or uh, because they had a bad take about COVID or, or whatever, right? Uh, and they constantly see celebrities getting away with a lot worse shit. Like, for instance, Johnny Depp asking, like, when is the last time a president got assassinated, right? An actor assassinated a president. Like, that's an actual quote from Johnny Depp. And nothing happens to Johnny Depp, right? But meanwhile, if you misgender someone on Twitter at the time, you would get banned. So there's a lot of animosity. There's a lot of grudge that people have. And when they see another celebrity doing a similar stuff, but now the overtone windows is moved, they want to see the same punishment that happened to them when they misgender someone uh, being applied to the celebrity. They want to see celebrities being dragged down to the same level where the peasants are. And this is a golden opportunity for them. So at this point, like no amount of apology, there's no backpedaling, there's nothing that they can potentially do in order to appease the mob. The only thing that can be done is if a sufficient amount of time passes... Many other celebrities get punished for stuff they say, just like right-wingers would get punished back in the day for misgendering. And, and then people will eventually calm down and things will get back to normal. Um, but this is why the apology didn't work. And them deleting it basically shows that actually they don't really have any type of reflection. And yeah, like they do not feel guilty about what they said. They just thought that it's a good financial decision to apologize. But then they realized that, well, actually, our fan base are also leftists, and, and many of them may feel the same way we do. So by apologizing to right-wingers, it will alienate the leftist crowd that we have as well. So they're making now a decision to cut off right-wingers from their fan base and, and stick with the more hardcore fans that would probably be okay with the statement that they had. So this is how I assess when I look at uh, celebrities. I don't assess like what is moral, uh, what is their morality, what do they think. I assess it's like what gives the money. Like in the current environment, what are the decisions that a celebrity can make in order to please investors 
and to please the demographic that they're appealing to. So uh, this is why I think they deleted it. Let me know what you guys think, though, and as usual, I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.